Hey there, and welcome back to Legend Finance, your number one destination for all things related to the exciting world of finance and investments. Today, we've got a truly fantastic episode for you, one that will catapult your financial knowledge into the stratosphere. That's right, we're breaking down the complex but rewarding world of derivatives trading. We'll strip away all the financial jargon and guide you through this captivating subject in our signature easy-to-understand bite-sized pieces. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just dipping your toes into the ocean of finance, this episode is designed to empower everyone to comprehend and potentially utilize derivatives in their investment strategy. But before we dive in, let me take a moment to remind you, if you're enjoying our content and learning something new, don't forget to hit that like button. It not only supports us, but it also ensures other eager minds can discover our channel and join our growing community. Also, if you haven't already, do subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss out on the next big thing in finance. All right, are you ready? Let's set sail into the thrilling world of derivatives trading and see where the winds of finance can take us. Stay tuned. Financial derivatives. A derivative might sound technical, but it's just something that draws its value from another item. Think about company shares, a house, or even more surprising examples like a collectible doll or student debt. It's essentially an agreement between two parties, like a wager on the price changes of this so-called underlying asset. As the asset's price fluctuates, so does the value of the derivative. Derivatives, they're all about price relationships. And that's why they're traded in vast amounts daily, for sound financial reasons, and well, some wild speculative ones. But let's strip it back to the basics. Imagine your buddy plans to sell his bike for $500 in three months because he's moving. You promise to buy it at that time if he agrees to sell it to no one else. You shake hands on it and voila, you've created a derivative. It's simply a contract about an underlying asset, like that bike in our example. Examples Wondering how a derivative gets its value from an underlying asset? Let's revisit our bike example. Two months go by, with one left before your friend moves. The bike manufacturer just jacked up the prices. Your friend could sell his bike for $600 now, but he's contractually bound to sell it to you for $500. So you approach potential buyers, offering your contract spot for $100. If they agree, they'll buy your friend's bike next month for $500. Effectively, they're ready to pay $600 in total, while your friend is still locked into selling his bike for $500. That's the magic of derivatives, and you are making a $100 win with your derivatives after two months of signing the contract. Types of derivatives Forward contract Our bike agreement That's a forward contract, one of four main types of derivatives. These are just deals between a buyer and seller, and it's a zero-sum game. One wins, the other loses. Take our friend who had to sell his $600 bike for $500. He lost $100. In a typical forward contract, Two parties decide to trade something, like an asset, on a future date for a fixed price. And as these contracts got more popular, some smart folks started using templates with set terms like 100 underlying shares, a December 15th maturity date, and a strike price of $800. It made the whole process a lot simpler. Futures contract. Standardized forward contracts, or futures for short, are ready-to-go deals waiting for a buyer and seller. Each day, traders shuffle millions of these futures around, dealing with things like company stocks, oil, gold, and yes, even student debt. As the value of the underlying asset shifts, so do the gains and losses for each party. They can duck out of the contract at any time before the due date, depending on their current standing. Once the maturity date arrives, the holder has to settle up. One side pays and the other delivers the asset. Just think of WTI crude oil futures. There are barrels of oil swapping hands every week. Options contract. You probably noticed that both forwards and futures mean both parties have obligations, right? When the contract's due, one side has to sell and the other has to buy, no matter what. Well, let's mix things up with an options contract. This is still a deal between two parties to trade an asset at a set time and price. But here's the twist. They've got an escape hatch. With options, parties can choose whether or not they want to follow through with the deal. Remember our friend with the bike? If he'd had an options contract, he could have hit the eject button, walked away from the deal if he wanted to, and sold his bike for more. You might be thinking this sounds a bit unfair, but remember, it's a deal. Here's the twist. The escape button isn't free. Your friend has to give you a little something, let's say $10, for the privilege of this option. 
This fee is what we call the option premium. Come maturity, if your friend decides he wants to sell, you'll buy the bike for $500 and the deal's done. But what if he changes his mind and hits the escape button, leaving the contract to expire? He keeps his bike and you pocket the $10 premium. And if you want the option to sell instead of buy, that's called a put option. Put option. It's another kind of contract that lets you sell an asset at a future date for a set price. But it's not free, the buyer has to pay a fee up front, which we call a premium. Just imagine all the put options out there for Amazon stocks, each with their own date and premium. If you accept that deal, you're promising to potentially buy those stocks at a certain date and price. You might wonder how much these premiums cost and why you pay a specific amount for a put option. That's all part of the world of derivative pricing, which is a huge topic in itself, but for now, the short answer is that it's all about the market price. Just like there's a flip side to every coin, the opposite of a put option is a call option. Here's how it goes. You get the right, but not the obligation, to buy an asset at a future date for a set price. And like with a put option, you've got to fork over the premium up front. And there you have it. That's your crash course in the four main types of derivatives. If you rewind and rewatch everything, those types of contracts need time to internalize. Use cases. You might be wondering why we even bother with these contracts. Wasn't banking just fine without them for thousands of years? Well, not quite. Let's say you really want your friend's bike. That's why you'd strike a forward contract to lock down that bike for today's price. This isn't just about bikes, though. Consider airlines and their fuel costs. Prices can swing like crazy, and guessing future costs is a challenge. So they lock in a price for the fuel they'll need down the line. Sure, they could just buy all the fuel they'll need, but they'd rather not spend a fortune on something they won't use for a while, and let's be honest, who wants a huge stockpile of explosive material? So they look to the future. They secure a price now for something they'll need in six months, never even dealing with the actual fuel. Then at the last minute, they sell the contract and either make a profit or take a loss. This process of securing a new contract for the next period is called rolling over your future. With fuel hedging, if oil prices go up, the airlines make a profit from their derivatives, which offsets the higher fuel costs. The lower cost of fuel lessens their losses on the derivatives if prices decline. This clever use of derivatives is known as cost hedging. Now back to our bike example. Maybe you didn't even want the bike. You just suspected its value would rise over time. That's using your derivative for speculation. Speculation. Imagine buying a stock and seeing its price rise. That's a good feeling, right? But with the same investment, you could have bought a hundred call options or entered more futures. This is called leverage, which means a tiny market shift can make a big difference in your portfolio. But remember, it's a double-edged sword. If you're wrong, your options can end up being worthless and you might lose your initial investment. With futures, there's no eject button. Sure, you can also bet on a price drop by selling call options or buying put options. If the contract expires, you could double your money. But let's be honest, hindsight is 20 20th. When it's decision time, nobody really knows where things are headed. This is true for every oil, crop, stock, even student loan. They can all become derivatives. So knowing what you're doing is crucial. Remember Warren Buffett's comment about derivatives being financial weapons of mass destruction. He didn't mean they were bad by nature. Think of it like nuclear energy. It can light up a city or destroy it. What makes derivatives destructive is when speculators risk money they have for profits they don't need. That's just reckless. As technology makes trading derivatives easier, we need to tread carefully so we don't ignite a financial disaster. Thank you so much for watching Legend Finance today, everyone. It's been a fascinating journey, diving into the intricate world of derivatives trading. We truly hope that the knowledge you gained today will help you navigate the turbulent seas of finance with a bit more ease and confidence. We'd love to know your thoughts. What was your biggest takeaway from today's episode? Do you have any lingering questions about derivatives trading? Drop a comment below. We love hearing from our community. And remember, if you found today's video useful and informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It helps us immensely and allows us to keep providing top-notch content for you. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and bell icon to stay updated on future releases. There's a lot more finance magic to come. Lastly, if you have any friends, family, or colleagues who might benefit from understanding derivatives trading, don't hesitate to share this video. Remember, knowledge shared is knowledge doubled. Thank you once again for joining us today. Keep expanding your financial horizons, and as always, 
Stay legendary.